Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at what could happen once the Federal Reserve starts raising interest rates, which they're supposed to start doing later this year. To determine what could potentially happen, we're going to look at some of the previous times where the Federal Reserve has increased interest rates, and we're going to look at what investments performed the best during those time periods. Okay, now before we jump into what investments have historically done the best, I just want to let everybody know about a website we're building to help everybody research companies and ultimately value stocks quickly and easily. So when the site first goes up, well, we're going to have a handful of quick and easy tools that can help us reliably value stocks using something like discount of free cash flow. That way we can try to identify which companies look like they could be could be the most interesting to analyze deeper. Now, we expect the website to be up and running and by the end of the second quarter of this year. But if you do sign up now, well, we're locking in the price forever. So the price will never, ever go up on you. And in the meantime, you'll have access to our private investing discord where we do three live streams per week. One of them is a discounted cash flow live stream, which we actually recently did on this channel where we analyze your stocks for you using an Excel template that we built that will ultimately be what the website is trying to do, trying to duplicate. Okay, so let's jump right in. So, like I said before, this is the Fed funds rate going back to the early 90s. And there's a few different time periods here where the interest rates have gradually increased, where the Federal Reserve has gradually increased interest rates. Our question is, from the bottom of each of these time periods up to the top, which types of stocks or in which types of investments performed the best. Now, the most common investments that we hear could do well once the Fed starts increasing interest rates are investments like banks. That's one good example. In theory, interest rate spreads should widen and banks make higher profits. And in theory, the stock follows suit or even something like commodities. Think gold or silver. So let's take a peek at these and see if this is true. See what ultimately could be the best investments. So let's start back in the early 90s. And when we zoom into the actual time period to the actual interest rate hikes, well, we could see that the Federal Reserve brought interest rates from about 3% at the start of this time period to up to about 6%. So during this entire time period, how did banks do as one example? By the way, uh, we used indexes to measure these. So we used the bank index, uh, commodity index, things like that. Well, the total return for banks during this time period was about 8.5%. So that's a decent start. But the returns for the S&P 500 over this very same time period was about 11%. So clearly, banks came up a bit short of what the broader S&P 500 did from the start of when the Fed started increasing interest rates to the top, which again is supposed to happen soon. Now, I was curious about how other types of stocks also performed, performed during these time periods. And we could see that mid-cap stocks were up about 4%. Small cap stocks, well, they posted gains of slightly over 1%. Okay, how about commodities? So when I track the broader Bloomberg Commodity Index, well, commodities in general did the best during this time period, posting gains of about 12%. So that's good. But interestingly, both gold and silver, although they were up, they were only up a little bit. So overall, for this time period, it looks like both commodities, broad basket of commodities, and the S&P 500 look like these were the best performers. Okay, now let's move along back over to the financial crisis. And again, we'll zoom into this particular time period here, and we can see that the Federal Reserve consistently increased interest rates during this time period. And this is how each of the asset classes did, how they each performed during our time period. Now, this was the lead up to the collapse of the financial system. So I'm sure it's no surprise that banks did fairly well on the lead up to the financial crisis. Banks, the broad basket of banks, posted up returns of about 30%. Then gold and silver had fantastic runs. Plus, all groups of stocks, all classes of stocks did fairly well again leading up to the financial crisis. Now, of course, when we go back to our longer term chart for a second, well, of course, we can say during the lead up, which ones did fairly well? But I was curious because this one, this one time period is a little bit unusual compared to the other two time periods because this one was followed by a colossal collapse in the broader economy. Well, I was curious how each of our stock classes performed if we started at the same time period at the beginning of the rate hike increases and held it all the way through to when they dropped interest rates down to zero or practically zero. And it may be no surprise, but during that time period, gold actually put it up 
uh, posted the strongest return of about 110%. So gold climbed higher on the, as they were increasing interest rates and it kept moving higher as the economy collapsed. So we should keep that in the back of our mind. Okay. Now let's move on to the most recent rate hike increase. Now when we zoom into this time period here, well, we can see that rates increased from right around zero to about two and a half percent. And when we add the performance for each of our asset classes, well, now we can see that the S&P 500 did the best. In fact, all stocks did fairly well during this time period, although banks were not too far behind them. Commodities, they didn't do quite as well. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Well, let's look at the bigger picture and we'll take the averages for all of our asset classes. And on average, well, it looks like silver performed the best, posting up an average return of about 33%. Although I'm not too sure that that is a viable investment strategy or maybe not the best investing strategy since two out of the three time periods, silver was actually in the lower half of a lot of these investments, but they had the one great investment time period during the financial crisis. So I'm not sure I'd be running out and buying silver right now. Then we have the S&P 500, and this was our next best performer. And much to my surprise, I actually expected banks and commodities would be further near the top of this list. And broadly speaking, the S&P 500 did decent in each of the time periods that we analyzed. And this is one of my biggest takeaways from this analysis. We know that the Fed is going to start increasing interest rates this year. They almost have to because they have to get inflation under control. So the question is, where is the best spot for our investments at this point? Personally, I think large cap stocks like the S&P 500 could be a good place to start. Now, small cap stocks and mid cap stocks have actually gotten creamed in the early part of this year. So we might find some interesting value opportunities over there. Now, I do think that banks could be a nice diversifier. They held up okay during each of our time periods. They could be a nice diversifier to our overall portfolio if we don't have exposure there. So that is something that we should consider if we are comfortable with the stock that we find. The key is that we don't overpay for any of our stocks. In fact, I think that's the key at this point in time because the markets, because the economy is in such an unusual place right now, I think it makes, we have to be super careful not to overpay for any of our investments. And that's actually one of the reasons that we're building the website that I mentioned before to try to make finding reliable ways to come up with a fair value for stocks quick and easy. And again, if you're interested in signing up for that website, I will leave a link in the description below and right here for how to sign up to it. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.